everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to a very special episode of Page to Screen. This year is the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death and last week was Midsummer's Night. So I am doing a very special mini episode um, looking at Shakespeare's play A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was contacted by the British Council because they are running a massive global event called Shakespeare Lives all year, celebrating Shakespeare's plays in all its forms. And they have released a special platform called Mix the Play which allows you to play around with some different production elements and create your own scene from A Midsummer Night's Dream. So what I thought I would do is look at a couple of adaptations that there have been of the play and then have a go with the platform myself and see what I create. I love A Midsummer Night's Dream. I feel like it's a very obvious thing to say and it's a lot of people's favourite Shakespeare play but it is so funny um, and I really enjoy watching it. I've seen a lot of productions of it live and I've been in um, productions when I was at university myself so it is one of his plays which is very close to my heart. To recap the story you have the four lovers Lysander and Hermia who are in love with each other, Demetrius who is in love with Hermia and Helena who is in love with Demetrius, all four of whom run off to the woods on Midsummer's Night who then get played around with by the fairies. The Queen Titania and the King Oberon are having Having an argument so Oberon and his servant Puck play some games on Titania and by the by also play games on the lovers so that Lysander and Demetrius are both bewitched from loving Hermia into loving Helena um, who thinks that they're mocking her and just it's an absolute farce and hilarious. So the first version that I watched was from 1935 and this is I think one of the earliest versions of A Midsummer Night's Dream that there's been on film and that stars James Cagney as Bottom the Weaver and Olivia de Havilland as Hermia. At its heart this is a really um, basic adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream. The costumes are all um, from the Elizabethan period and the main focus is entertainment of the audience. Shakespeare's words are stripped back um, quite a lot and there's a bigger emphasis on slapstick, a lot of the acting is very overly dramatic and very loud and very big but it is very funny. One of my favourite parts of A Midsummer Night's Dream is the play within the play um, which Bottom and his fellow mechanicals are putting on for the marriage of Theseus and Hippolyta and James Cagney is hilarious um, in this in the film when he is saying I could play all the parts, I can play Pyramus, I can play the lion, I can play Thisbe as well and um, he is really hilarious and he is also very funny later on when they are staging the play, um, his overacting um, is just wonderful. Considering the era that this film is from, the special effects are actually really impressive. I think maybe because the actual film quality isn't fantastic, um, they get away with the special effects not being that amazing because you can't actually see that well. But the fairy sections are very ornate, they've got lots of different costumes, lots and lots of um, children dressed up as little fairies running around in these great big scenes. And they use a kind of overlaying technique with a lot of the fairies um, floating around so that they look translucent. And um, it actually works really, really well. Overall, what this film does really well is bring out the humour in Shakespeare's words. The interactions between the lovers are very, very funny and the play within a play itself it is really hilarious if a little bit overdone. The next film I watched was from 1999, which stars a whole ream of famous people like Michelle Pfeiffer as Titania, you've got Christian Bale and Dominic West as uh, Lysander and Demetrius. And although this is quite a simple, um, straightforward production of um, Midsummer Night's Dream, it's actually a really good one. Although the story is set in Athens, for some reason this seems to move it to Italy and into the 19th century, so we have sort of Victorianised clothes, the lovers are going around the forest on bicycles which the fairies are finding really interesting but aside from that it doesn't actually play around with the main concept of A Midsummer Night's Dream too much but by being quite a straightforward production it actually focuses on the interaction between all the characters in a similar way that the 1935 version really brings out the humour um, in perhaps more of a slapstick fashion. This adaptation relies a lot more on the words. But again, a really good, really solid adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I think this would be a really good one to watch if you've not seen the show adapted before, if you've not seen it on stage before. Um, this gives you a really great flavour of what it's about. And then stepping away from tradition completely is the most latest adaptation 
of A Midsummer Night's Dream, which was shown on the BBC a few weeks ago and stars Matt Lucas as Bottom. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. They've reimagined Athens as a dictatorship as a kind of modern dystopian um, state run by Theseus, which is interesting. But within this setting, it does actually still hold very true to Midsummer Night's Dream. I thought it might be a little bit more experimental with the plot than that because it is about fairies and it is about magic. You've actually got quite a lot of scope for playing around with things like the era or messing with the plot a little bit. And they, they didn't do that as much in this adaptation as I thought that they might. Something that I really loved about this version were the fairy king and queen. They were so powerful and Titania especially was like a warrior queen and you really bought them as heads of state, as powerful people in their own right to have had a disagreement and that is causing discord um, throughout the land. An interpretation that I did really like um, was that in the original play Titania is actually in love a little bit with Theseus and Oberon is in love with Hippolyta so part of Titania and Oberon's disagreement is over the fact that their erstwhile loves are now getting married and what this version does is twist it so that Titania is actually in love with Hippolyta and I really enjoy that because Hippolyta is a very interesting character in A Midsummer Night's Dream and she's often overlooked and what's actually happened is that Theseus has defeated the Amazons and now is marrying her so she's effectively a prisoner of war um, and he's marrying her in order to create peace but in this version because Theseus is this um, dictator conqueror um, Hippolyta is very obviously being kept his prisoner but A Midsummer Night's Dream really is one of Shakespeare's most adapted plays. It's been adapted into operas and ballets on stage, um, on screen and film and TV um, so many times and there are tons more adaptations out there that I could have watched for this video. And if this has inspired you to have a play around with your own adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream, you can go on the Mix the Play website, which I will link in the description box below, which has been hosted by the British Council. It takes the meeting of Bottom and Titania as its basis, and then you can play around. The Bottom is already chosen, but you can choose who plays your Titania. You can watch different auditions. Not only choose who you cast, but also choose her acting style. You can play with the costume with the setting, with the music, and in the end it outputs your version of that scene out there. And it's really interesting and actually quite insightful in terms of how the different energies of the same person can really alter a scene. And it also made me realise how versatile A Midsummer Night's Dream is when you see it in all of these different settings. Um, and the story's still really working. You can also go to shakespearelives.org and see some of the other events that are happening globally to celebrate Shakespeare in all of his forms. There are other online resources that you can access and you can also check to see if there is anything happening in your country that you can physically go and see. If you have a go at mixing your own version of A Midsummer Night's Dream, you can share them on Twitter, so please do do that and at me in so I can see what creations you've made. And I will see you in my next video. Bye! And naturally, if you're talking about gender being a construct, she does talk about both gender and sexuality being on spectrum. She doesn't stick to the gender binary idea. And I just really loved the book. I thought she argued really coherently and persuasively. And by the end of it, when she talks about just...